Hello, Ubuntu's from around the world. My name is Kais, and I'm 11 years old. I live in Montreal, Canada. Welcome to our Ubuntu Zoom session, where me and my co-host, Sarvan Gissim, who is 12 years old and lives in London, will be interviewing our guest changemaker, Leila Van Gissim, who is from Tunis, Tunisia. Leila owns a hotel called Dar Van Gissim, and in her hotel, they try to preserve heritage and create business opportunities for different artisans. Leila's work contributes to SDGs, particularly number eight about job creation and economic growth, and number 11, sustainable cities and communities. Sarah will be asking the questions to Leila about her background, her journey, her work, her skills, and her impact. We hope that you will enjoy this session, and I will now be handing over to Sarah to start the interview. Hello, Leila. Hi, Sarah. Hi, guys. So, um, what was your childhood like? Uh, my childhood? Uh, I come from a family. We, uh, we are very close to each other. So, uh, we spend a lot of time at home uh, playing with my siblings. And uh, most of my memories of... I'm the oldest in the family. So, uh, all my, uh, my two brothers and sisters, they, they all came after me. And I always felt uh, uh, I'm the oldest that need to be uh, uh, need to behave well and take care of them. <laughs> yeah. Did you like play any games or have any interests when you were younger? Mm, yes, there wasn't a lot of uh, activities uh, like like uh, nowadays for you at my, at our time. Uh, my father used to take us every weekend to the library to buy books. Uh, so me and uh, my brother Hazem, we, uh, we used to enjoy reading uh, some stories. Um, but also with the family, my father was a big fan of taking pictures, of uh, taking family pictures. So uh, we used to go and explore gardens and spaces and he used to take, and we have tons and tons of family pictures. <laughs> Did you have any inspiration or like who inspires you? Mm, who inspires me? Uh, well, uh, my dreams change a lot over my my life. <laughs> so people that inspire me keep on changing. <laughs> Do you have Depending any, on... Huh? Do you have any interests outside of what? Uh, yes, of course I do. Um, I, uh, I love people. So uh, anything that has to do with people. Um, so uh, now I'm, uh, I'm a business owner, as Kai said, uh, but I'm also I, um, trying to get into some uh, uh, city activities, city decision making. And this is how I got into uh, a city council. You know what's a city council? No, could you explain please? Yeah, so every city has like a city council, like a board, like people that you elect and uh, they become the ones who, uh, who make changes in the city or decide what to do. Uh, so, um, so you get elected. So I'm now I'm elected. I'm a very bad politician, but I love, <laughs> I love working for the city. <laughs> okay. um, so what do you mostly like about your city? Um, so I'm, I'm working in two cities. There's a city called, uh, there's a little city called Medina, where my business is. And I'm elected in a city called Bni Khaled, and that's where my both parents come from. So what I like the most about the Medina, uh, where, where my business, Darbin Gesem is, is uh, the, the, the magic. Uh, there's, I, think, I feel there's a lot of magic when I walk in the narrow streets and I see old buildings. And uh, the buildings have so many lives over the years because different people lived and, li and lived in different ways. So it's always, uh, it feels like magic walking around. And in Bni Khaled, it's, uh, it's, another it's another kind of magic because uh, all my ancestors were there. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's a different, there's a sense of nostalgia uh, to my grandmother, to um, all the stories that my, both my parents used to tell us about their childhood. So I feel very connected to, to Bni Khaled as well. Oh, that's nice. How do you help, like however you're helping? Um, well, in my business, um, it's, it's of course, uh, my business is a social enterprise. So uh, that means that um, when, we, when we create, um, 
whatever business we do when we have an income. So you, we're selling um, in a hotel, we're selling a rooms and a lunch or a dinner or something. And then of course we generate an income. Um, we cover all our expenses and then there's profit. Uh, so in the business, we use all the profit to, uh, to restore other historical buildings and uh, create new jobs. Uh, but also we use the profit to help young people like you who want to uh, maybe have a project they want to do in the Medina. Maybe you want to make a festival or you want to paint a wall uh, or you want to write a newspaper. So we use our profit to, to help young people um, execute their dreams in the Medina. Um, and you know, I, I feel, um, as, as the description says about my business, um, we do, um, we, I'm very passionate about heritage revival. Heritage is anything that you inherit. It's, it's our culture. And uh, I think in Tunisia, we have a very rich um, heritage. There's a lot of, there's a big wealth of heritage, could be food, could be building, could be dress, could be a song. And uh, just giving it another meaning uh, and making it create new jobs is, is something that excites me a lot. Oh, you seem like you really like your job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people uh, live their life and uh, with a job they don't really love. And I think I'm very lucky that I wake up in the morning to do something I love. Uh, so, uh, but uh, it's not easy. It's, it's, a, it's, hard, it's hard decision sometimes to, uh, to dedicate your life to something you're passionate about. Uh, what's the toughest thing that you've ever had to do for your job? Um, well, it's always, I think, I think Qais relates to what I'm gonna say. I think it's, the toughest thing is always moving countries, right Qais? I think when you go from one country to the other, it's, you're always worried that uh, maybe you'll make friends, maybe not, maybe you like it, maybe you do not really. Huh? That doesn't really happen. <laughs> like, I changed. I, I changed. Uh, I changed countries a few times in my life, and and it was always scary to, uh, to yeah, you know, so. take have the courage to to move to a new place and start life all over again. Yeah, must be. So, what's like the best, like the coolest thing you've ever done for your job that you love? Mm, there are many, 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 many cool things uh, I've done and I'm very excited about. But I think the, the latest thing that I'm very excited about was uh, um, a calligraphy that, uh, that we revived. You know what's calligraphy? It's like yeah. writing. Oh. Calligraphy is like writing. Uh, but you know, in the old days when there were no computers, uh, when you, if you want to write a letter to someone, you go to a calligrapher and they write it for you. Oh. So there are people who have beautiful handwritings and uh, in Arabic, because um, in the Arabic language, there are different types of calligraphy, just like any other language. And uh, the coolest thing I've just done uh, was that there's a, um, a calligraphy a style, Arabic calligraphy style, that is, uh, was um, invented in year 1019. That's exactly a thousand, years, a thousand years old. And uh, so we worked with calligraphers to bring it back to life and to digitalize it, which means now you can download it and you can use it on, uh, on Word or Excel or PowerPoint. So uh, I think it's very cool to, uh, to bring something like this from history and make it accessible and usable. And, and it's a Tunis it was invented in Tunisia, in Cairoen. So it's really cool to have it now uh, usable on our computers. So you definitely do use technology in your work then? Well, we can't escape technology nowadays. Otherwise, yeah. I would be talking to you now. <laughs> yeah. Do you work with like a big team or do you work by yourself? Of course, I have a team and I love them all. Um, in in Darbengesim, uh, we have a team of 14 people. And in my company, Bluefish, uh, there's myself and my colleague, Imen. So, um, all together, we are 15 people. Oh, that's very nice. What inspired you to like get into this work or start? Yeah, just what inspired you to get into this work? Into? To do this work, like start dubbing. Oh, um, I think I, what's inspired me to do this work, the work I do, is that I think um, 
uh, in Tunisia, in uh, my country, Tunisia, we have uh, a lot of um, a lot of heritage. We have uh, there's a beautiful story about Tunisia that we're not telling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's exciting to uh, to try not only share the story but also make it a business, make it a business that can create jobs for people, so other people can do things they are passionate about. And I think this is this is the this is the challenge that I love to uh, uh, to work on. It's you know get something that we have inherited, you know, like uh, as I said, calligraphy or building or music or food that is from our culture, from the Tunisian culture, and try to uh, to make it a business that is sustainable, so that our heritage can sustain, it can live. You know, when something when something makes jobs. Uh, then it's easier to sustain. If something is not, sadly, if something is, is hard to make um, uh, money from, sadly, it dies away. Mm. So about Darbin Gersim, how did you come up with this name or how did you just come up with Darbin Gersim? Uh, Darbin Gersim is the name of my guest house. So Dar in Arabic means house and uh, Bin Gersim is my family name. Uh, so I did not come up with the name. It was my father who insisted that we should call it Darbin Gessim. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. I was a little bit afraid because I, was, I wasn't very comfortable having the family name on a business. Yeah. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you. Has, how has like, coronavirus impacted Darbin Gessim? It's been, it's been very tricky because uh, obviously we needed to close down the business. Uh, I was worried about my team, but I was also, of course, worried about my family. So uh, we, um, we closed down the business. Darbin Gessim was closed for more than two months. And of course, it was very tough because in two, those two months, we did not make any income. We did not make money. So um, we're using savings to, to pay the salaries. Uh, now we have just reopened, but it's going to be a very tough summer. Uh, because uh, because the air, there are no airplanes, the airport is still kind of closed. Um, so it's going to be a difficult summer. Maybe we're going to try and, and change the business a little bit. So we're not going to sell rooms. Maybe we'll make events like dinners, lunch, and you know family gatherings on the rooftop. So we're trying we're trying to develop new uh, new business ideas to keep the business going. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any like hopes and goals for Darbin Gerson? Of course. Um, I hope, I, my hope is a little bit bigger than Darbin Gerson. I hope that the whole Medina, uh, it's the, the, uh, the little city, historical city where Darbin Gerson is. Uh, I hope it all becomes uh, lively, exciting, attractive, and uh, people enjoy uh, spending a day there. Um, helping artisans or experiencing historical buildings or eating, you know, enjoying some food experiences. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah. I hope I'll be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. So. Hi, do you have any more questions, Sarah? Uh, no, I don't think so. I have one last question. Do you have any advice for future change makers, like people who want to be change makers? Uh, yes, of course. I think um, there are a lot of challenges in the world today. Um, there's um, there's uh, nature, environmental challenges. Um, there are educational challenges. Um, there are healthcare challenges, um, and I think I think um, it, it's exciting to uh, to to look at those um, challenges as opportunities. So try to to think how how can I design a solution um, to to make a, a living an exciting living for myself out of this uh, challenge, uh, but also solve it. It's it's, it's I think it's um, as as the description says in the Obot website. I'm a social entrepreneur, so uh, I think I, I love social entrepreneurship. I think it will change the world. <laughs> so uh, because it's you, you're creating uh, you're creating wealth through your business, but also your business is is solving a, a problem in the world, and I think this is a, the most beautiful equation. All right, that was the end now. So.
thank you, Lulu and Sara, both for coming. And thank you, the Abutus, for listening. And make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook and, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can hear about upcoming sessions with different change makers. Make, please also tell your friends about Ubuntu and share social media links with them. About And last but not least, don't forget to answer our quiz and collect a, dig, a digital badge. Thanks, okay. okay, thank you. Enjoyed. I enjoyed our talk, Kais and Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.